So before we start uh, doing the lab, for migrating databases. Uh, one important logical unit of Oracle database is table space. So what is a table space in Oracle? Because we are going to do a transportable table space, so you should understand what it actually means. Uh, this is, uh, I am assuming there are some students who are not from Oracle or from database world. So it's just a brief overview. So table space is a logical storage unit. So it's not physical. It's a logical grouping of uh, data files. So it collectively stores all of the database data. data. So this uh, table space will contain multiple data files, which are the physical structure, where the actual data is stored on those files. And uh, the grouping of those files is called a table space. It's a logical unit. So it could contain one or more physical files. So a table space could have a single data file or could have multiple data files. And the size of the table space will increase when uh, more data files are added. So it's not limited. Uh, it can increase over time as need arises. And finally, the data files are the physical structure that actually conform to the operating system. So they are the ones which uh, interact with the operating system. Table space is just a logical unit. So you could have a user term, and uh, in order to to isolate all the data stored by, by Tom, maybe you could have a table space where he stores his data. So it's easier to sort it out. So you, because the data files will not give you any metadata on what data is stored. So, so table space come in handy here. Basically, if you look at the slide, uh, this is a logical unit and this are the data files and this is the actual data which is stored on those. So it's a simple concept, but in order for us to do a transportable table space, you need to understand this. Okay, so we're going to move on to the lab. So <clears throat> before we start, uh, uh, let's uh, make a couple of assumptions. We are going to create two database systems. Uh, one is we are going to make an assumption. One is your on-site database, and the other one is in the cloud. And this whole exercise, we are trying to take data from your on-site database and migrate to the cloud. That's what we're going to do here. So in order to do that, we will create two instances. So let's start with the first one. I'm going to name this source database. For region, we are going to say no preference. Uh, for the software release, we'll go with 11G2. And we will do an enterprise edition. And we are going to create a single instance. So for database, we are going to call a source. We're going to give it a password, which conforms to the OCI standard. We're going to keep everything standard here. And we are not going to do any backup for now. So this is just to test different options of migrating the database. Yeah, I do need a public key. So as we did in the past, uh, we are going to use my first key. Mm. 
will load the first key We are not going to use high performance storage. This is the listener port time zone character set. So char character set uh, is setting which uh, helps an Oracle database to assume that the data being sent or received is in the same character set. So it does not need to do any conversion. So it also helps with performance. A little bit on character set is when uh, computer systems process characters, they are numeric and codes. So instead of the graphical representation of a character, for example, alphabet A, uh, it actually stores in a numeric code. And that is interpreted by the software as the letter. This numeric codes are especially important in a global environment because of the need to convert the data in different character sets. So do read up on that uh, if you are not familiar with that. You specify an encoded character set when you create the database. Choosing a character set determines what language can be represented. So there are limitations depending what character set you select. So that limits you what languages can be used. Another thing, so it also affects how you create the database schema. So what type of data you're going to process. So you have to develop your application according to that and how the database works with the operating system. And finally, the performance. If it does not have to do any conversion, that helps also. So it gives uh, the confirmation page what it's going to create. The instance is source, the source database. You know, we are using uh, Oracle Database Cloud Service. And we are going to use the release 11G Enterprise Edition. One Oracle CPU, we've provided the SSH key. And we'll say create. So it's going to create that uh, instance. Once it's created, we should see a public IP, whereas the OPC user, we can log in. Now we are going to create the target. So this is our target instance, which is assuming this is our in the cloud. We're going to keep it the same. We're going to call this a target. We're going to leave it the same here also. None, no backups. So again, we've got the confirmation page. It's an identical. Uh, very important, you want to keep it identical when you are going to do export import or going to do a table space, transportable table space. So, so make sure you keep it identical. So it's creating both of them. And uh, so this will take, so in the summary, we've got two instances with the single OC, OCPU each, 15 gig of memory, 115 gig of storage. And uh, it's got one public IP. So this takes around an hour. So I'm going to pause the video here and resume back when it's completed.